everyone, welcome to King Kansas Movie Reviews right here on YouTube. I'm your host, the one and only King Kansas, here to bring you another movie review right here on my YouTube channel. Guys, check out my other content right here on here. There's quite a few uh, reviews from superheroes to TV reviews from my couch, from my butt sitting on there from the theater and there's more coming your way more contents coming your way guys as the new year progresses along uh, people suggest what movies that you check someone has suggested to me so this is what this review is all about to revisit some of the superhero movies and start posting them up me I have gone back into the vault that I've already done these reviews and reposted them you already seen I believe uh, Shazam there's more coming your way don't worry there will probably be a bumblebee uh, Game of Thrones, I'm going to be doing the uh, Season 8 finale, I'm going to post that, and of course Avengers Endgame, and don't worry, whatever other Marvel movies I feel like watching again, I will repost, but anyways, I'm not here to talk about and blab about that stuff, I'm talking about this film, what movie am I talking about reviewing in this thing, or revisiting a second time and reviewing it for the second time, it's Wonder Woman, there she is back there, Mrs. Gal Gadot, I had the privilege to watch it today, from my couch, Full blast sound, you name it. My home theater really did some extra work here, I'll tell you that. And I can honestly tell you that I enjoyed it even more this time around, knowing what we'll be getting later this summer, I want to call it June, the King's uh, birthday month with Wonder Woman 84. A lot of little things I picked up in this one, which, you know what, kind of affects what I'm thinking is going to go down in Wonder Woman 84. It's kind of like clues. One in particular, guys, it's, this is going to be kind of spoilery, so if you haven't seen Wonder Woman, too bad. You've been warned, I'm telling you what I think, and I'm tying everything. I'm going to tell you some of the good things I liked or disliked about it. Anyways, uh, remember that chart scene in Wonder Woman 84 that she's going nuts on the street and that she, she's latching onto something and taking off? That's when she loses Steve Trevor. I kind of seen the same thing in the, this movie here. The first one is that when she loses him, she really explodes and she goes mental and she just takes out all those German soldiers and stuff and goes crazy. I think it's one of those. I think there could be a good chance that it's hinting that maybe she's going to lose Steve Trevor again. And that's going to cause her to go off like that and just go out whoever she's going after and putting an end to it. My speculation. Not to say it's going to happen or whatever, but that's what I kind of caught. But anyways... Watching this movie again, realizing more and more as time goes by that Chris Pine is perfect for uh, Scott Trevor and Gal Gadot is born to play Wonder Woman. The more and more you see that woman on screen, not only is she beautiful, but she embodies that whole role full heartedly. Like the innocence about her, the beauty about her, the strength about her, all into one. It's one good package. It's kind of like the same feeling you get for Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. You can't see nobody else playing him. Or Hugh Jackman as Wolverine until someone proves us wrong. But those characters, you just feel that that's what the role's for. And if it wasn't for them, it might not quite work. And of course, Patty Jenkins. More and more you watch her style, you understand why she understands this character well and it's going to move forward with all the characters. This storyline plot flew very well. It's about a little bit over two hours. The third scene or third act is the act that I always kept on harping on that, oh, you know what? The movie's great until it goes to the third part of the film and it, the third chapter and it goes down. It does, but not as badly as I thought it did. Like, I watched it for the fifth time now, and I can honestly say that it doesn't bother me as much. It's only Aries. It's the stuff that he does and his dialogue and the way he looks that kind of throws you off. You go, that guy's Aries? You know, that's the only thing that really throws me off now. The action here and there, it's not as cheesy as I thought it was. The mixture of Themyscira and how it kind of goes from a nice, beautiful, scenic place to dull and gray of England during the World War. And that epic scene that she goes up that ladder to walk no man's land. You feel something. I'm getting goosebumps as I'm saying this. I think it's one of the best cinematic scenes that you see a superhero walk up slowly in the effect and the feelings you feel as she goes and then she starts charging the field and then everybody else jumps. You just feel good that, you know, the good guys, the allies kicked the shit out of the Germans or the Nazis at that time. You feel something from it and that's how you should. Every time she's on screen, you feel something. And even Chris Pine, you feel the chemistry. I think it's the first time in a long time that you actually feel some sort of actual chemistry between 
two characters that were from the comics. Their love story, you can feel something there. I think the closest we ever got was uh, Andrew Garfield's and Emma Stone's, you know, uh, Gwen Stacy and Spider-Man the Amazing Spider-Man. That was the closest thing I felt something. Usually a lot of that falls flat. In this case, it doesn't. Can't wait to see where it expands in the next film. I'm very excited, looking forward to it. Guys, I don't know if you guys haven't seen this yet, buy the damn thing. I got it on Blu-ray and after watching this, I'm convinced if I can get my hands on a 4K version of Wonder Woman, I will do so and I don't care. I'll spend 30 bucks for it. I was always looking, oh, you know, maybe 20 bucks or something. No, no, no. This is a must-have 4K movie. This is a must-have movie. This is a must-see movie for all you guys to check out. So anyways, overall thoughts, loved it. You guys are going to love it. You know, this is a different Wonder Woman, so don't worry all you uh, Linda Carter fans. It's not going to take away that Wonder Woman from you, but you can see traces of her in this Wonder Woman and the way Patty Jenkins has directed this and, you know, with grace and beauty and the way she translated it on the big screen. It's phenomenal. I can't wait to see where Wonder Woman goes and she's one of the best characters out there. Not only for the females, but the males too. Like, she's someone you can look up to. Just love her, you know, characters. I love the way she didn't uh, mess up the whole God thing. Oh, you know what, you know, daughter of Zeus and all that. Because usually that can go really, real bad and real cheesy. But it all works for me. Even the ending, you know, it didn't stick to the landing 100%. But it's still a damn good movie. It's one of my top 10 superhero films of all time. So, you know what, and I'm glad. The more and more I watch it, the more and more... I agree with that decision. So anyways, guys, let me know in the comment sections what you think. Did you like the movie? Did you not see it? Are you going to go see it now? Since I did another review or my first official review by myself, I did one with Scotty V on the Civil Canadians, but this is my new thoughts, my updated thoughts on the movie. Hope you guys like it. Check out my other content. Like, share, and subscribe. And like always, stay off the King's throne. Go watch a couple more movies, and I'll see you here very soon. Take it easy.